Okay, this evening I want to talk about an issue that I think millions of people in the country will have on their mind, and that is refugees and refugees slash asylum seekers. The people coming in at the moment we know are neither, but we have a new, since we made this video, this is what we were going to show you last week, so we're a bit sort of a week behind on it, but we now have a new refugee emergency over our, an emergency for us i mean hanging over us boris johnson's government now says it's going to take twenty thousand refugees from afghanistan uh i don't know where we're going to put them i did read and it came as no surprise to me at all that refugees slash asylum seekers including the 20 odd thousand and it won't stop at twenty thousand refugees we're expecting from Afghanistan are going to be distributed to the poorest areas of the country. This should come as no surprise to anyone. And councils in the north of England are asking that refugees be distributed fairly because they don't have the money. They don't have the money for their own people. And yet they're expected to come up with money for people who have all sorts of problems. And, and it's, it's, it's absolute, I, I just genuinely don't know where we're getting the money from, or do I? Because also this week, the Chancellor of the Exchequer is going to get rid of the pension triple lock. And this pension triple lock guarantees a rise for pensioners, which is now going to be rather quietly, I think. Didn't see much about it in the media. Brushed aside. So British pensioners will have less money. Tens of thousands of people from God knows where will be accommodated and their every need met. But safety is a massive issue. And it's a massive issue before we even get on to Afghanistan. We know that Afghanistan, the Afghans, obviously not every individual, but as a society, is one of the strictest, most Sharia adhering of any Muslim society in the world. We know that they are now back under the Taliban, which retook the country in no time at all. We know that there are values there that belong, as far as we're concerned in the West, in another century. Stoning, slashings, executing apostates. According to Pew, in a Pew research carried out in 2014, you're into the 80, 90 odd percent of Afghans who support this brutal text text based sharia law so we're just adding 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 more people with completely alien values into our society creating great because we know the conflict that exists now we know the problems that exist now so it's going to make and make more and more and more additions to that so just the it's a there's a long list a long list of problems associated with all this but still, and regardless, regardless of how dramatically opposed to Britain's best interest this is, the Conservative government will do it anyway. And uh, I do want to address one comment which has caught my eye here. Um, and it says that 20,000 will become 140,000 once their extended families are brought here too. And this is true. This is, you know, this is an, uh, absolutely going to happen. But I want to take you through a couple of articles that I picked out. Uh, it's, it, the plot thickens, it just gets worse and worse. It gets worse and worse. So let's start with some figures first. How's a figure of £700,000 sound? That's, that's not what we're spending every day on, on uh, while our pensioners, pensions are cut. This is how much, according to this report, People traffickers are making per crossing from France into the English Channel, 700,000 per crossing. This was published uh, 21st of August, Saturday. Traffickers are taking in as much as 700,000 per channel crossing, it has been revealed, after up to 800 migrants landed in Kent in a record day for crossings. So our last record was 480. If I remember correctly, I think I do, or thereabouts. It's that record has now been absolutely smashed, almost doubled to 800 in a single day coming in. And you, these are the ones we know about as well. I mean, Kent is a big player, the, the coast 
is a big place. So 800 in a day, brand new record. And according to this, people smugglers are filling boats with, with 30 to 40 people, sometimes more, and charging near to 20,000 pounds per head. This does not sound like a mercy mission for people fleeing a tyrannical government for their very lives. 800 in a day, 20,000 each. <laughs> I tell you, I, I don't know where they're getting the 20,000 pounds from. It goes on to say the journeys produce a great deal of profit with a payout of only 2,000 needed for a boat and are worth more than drug smuggling, said a French police boss. So let's be clear about what our government is facilitating. Not only is it allowing people hundreds a day, people we know nothing about, people from a world, much of which is deeply hostile to Great Britain, and funding. I would imagine people traffickers are not the nicest of people. I'd imagine they're not. They're not doing this out of compassion, I don't think. Uh, I, I, I suspect strongly that people traffickers are not saints. So we're funding that with your money, by the way, not coming out of Boris Johnson's pocket, funding that while filling the country with people we know nothing about coming from a world we know with large populations hostile to Great Britain. What it, it, you, that's, that's what we're being governed by. That's what we're being governed by. So quickly, just one more short part of this article. These comments, comments from the police saying it's worth more than drug smuggling, the French police say this. The comments follow eyewitness reports suggesting that the total number of people to have made the treacherous trip, and this annoyed me a bit, I have to say, the treacherous trip. So even the, this is from the Daily Mail. So even the Daily Mail is getting into that poor old desperate migrant making a treacherous trip. That's how desperate they are. I'm sorry, I don't think crossing the English Channel on a dinghy is really the most treacherous thing a person can do. But also, I'm not sure how desperate they are if they've got £20,000 in their pocket to pay to a people traveller, tra trafficker. And, and this is, you know, we are funding this. You'll get this sanctimonious, bleeding heart stuff when they're funding, funding a corrupt trafficking system. Next article. Some more figures. Border force braced for 22,000 channel migrants this year. Just channel migrants. Triple the number who did it in 2020, with thousands more set to be smuggled in over lorries through ports. So the border force have braced, braced. <laughs> what, they want to welcome them faster? Border force have braced for 22,000 channel migrants this year as record numbers make the dangerous crossing. There's the Daily Mail throwing in that stuff as well. The estimated figure is triple the 8,000 that made the crossing in 2020 and considerably higher than the 2019 figure of 1,000. So let's get clear about this. So going back to 2019, two years ago, 1,000 people came across the channel. Last year, that went from 1,000 to 8,000. This year, 8,000 is turning in to 22,000. And those are just the ones that will be coming through the dinghy system from France through the English Channel. I wonder, I wonder, now call me crazy, I know, but I wonder if it might not have something to do with the fact that we take people in, put them up in hotels, give them accommodation, give them food, give them, give them whatever they want. Maybe that's the reason it goes from 1,000 to 8,000 to 22,000 in a couple of years. Maybe if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have 22,000 22, coming this year. It's an invitation, an absolute invitation. But it gets better. Here's the third article I wanted to show you this evening. And this one is from yesterday. Migrants suspected of smuggling guns on boats heading for the south coast sparked a major security alert in the English Channel this weekend. Amid a record-breaking, there's that record-breaker again, number of, of arrivals on Saturday, 
The French alerted British intelligence agencies to the possibility of firearms on one or more of the vessels which had left northern France. So we're paying people traffickers, spending money on tens of thousands of people while our own people get their pensions cut. We don't even know who they are. We don't even know how many. And now we're told it's highly possible that there are arms being carried in to the UK via these boats. It's better, doesn't it? It goes on, the warning was relayed to Border Force and British Coast Guards by the National Crime Agency. The Kent, now this line is interesting, the Kent Coast Guard helicopter stayed two miles away from migrants' boats as a safety precaution several times during the day. I don't really know where to start with that one. I'm going to read it again. The Kent Coast Guard helicopter stayed two miles away from migrants' boats, boats as a safety precaution several times during the day. If you have... Uh, let's, uh, I'm not going to repeat myself, but I want to... Let's just put it in, let's put it in another way. 20,000, 22,000 at least through one route this year were told by French intelligence that there may be guns on some of these boats. And it is still just allowed to happen. If they are, if arms are being carried, we're letting not only strangers flood in, but armed strangers flood in without knowing who they are. And instead of stopping this, instead of interesting, it's the very least you'd expect is that when there is this warning, that there would be some sort of protection to prevent armed men arriving on the shores. There'd be some sort of protection. But instead, we stay away for as a safety precaution. This is insanity, absolute insanity. It's a genuine threat to us, a genuine threat. I want to mention as well, before, the, uh, you, before we move on, I want to show you a message that just, just was set before we started. But before I do, I want to mention the Nationality and Borders Bill. Now, this has been introduced by this government, the same government that is allowing potentially armed men to land unsupervised, on. Un, without any information, free onto British streets, that same government has introduced a nationality and borders bill. The aim of this bill, don't make me love, the aim of this bill is to reduce small boat arrivals. In this report, it says the government aims to achieve this by penalising asylum seekers who entered the UK without authorisation from a country considered by the government to be safe. So this bit of window dressing is to try to persuade you that they will, the fact that these people come from France, a safe country, we know it's not genuine asylum, we know that anyway. So this is supposed to persuade you that they're aware that it's not really an asylum case if someone comes from a safe country that's actually someone who just wants to come to Britain for the benefits and it will penalize those who come from another safe country it will do nothing of the kind absolutely nothing of the kind it goes on let me read a, a, just one more paragraph of this the government proposes to penalize such migrants by prohibiting them from claiming asylum, asylum and trying to deport them. However, if it cannot deport them, it will permit them to claim asylum and will hear the claim. In other words, it will prohibit them from claiming asylum, but then claim allow them to claim asylum. It's the most... Orwellian piece of political theatre. I read one report on this who said the government intends to make it illegal to come here. Illegally. It already is 
illegal. Being not a morsel of doubt about this, this is the Tories trying to distract you from the realities. And next week, I want to talk a little bit more about the Tories. I've just written the script, so next week's video, I've just written the script, but I do want to consult somebody um, before I record it, somebody who I know is, is, has a great uh, interest in this and would like to contribute. Um, Britain betrayed the Tories since Thatcher is the working title I've given next week's video. Um, the reason I'm telling you is that I want to consult someone is because it, it may not be next week, but if it's not, it will be the week after. It might need a little bit more um, work. Since we need a starting point. The Tories have, in the last few decades, completely unashamedly adopted every woke globalist policy and absolutely sold out Britain in doing so. Whether it's campaigning to stay in the European Union, knowing full well it was taken away our sovereignty, whether it's this mass immigration, whether it's the end of free speech, the Tories have betrayed their own conservative principles or what used to be conservative principles and sold out this country to the globalists. 100% they have done that. There's no greater example of what they are allowing to happen now and to distract you from that, to sound like Tories. They're coming out with a completely unnecessary bill because this stuff is already illegal. Please don't fall for it. I know nobody watching me will. But to the public at large, it really, really, really the Tories have very they may sound different to Labour, but in signing up to the globalist agenda, they essentially are no different. In fact, it's worse, isn't it? It's worse because the Tories, I mean, at least Labour, you know, they're Britain hating loony lefties. But with the Tories, they pretend not to be. And that to me makes it just that even just that little bit worse. So I'll be looking at the Conservatives in much more detail next week. Uh, finally, just to let you know, this weekend I will be doing a lot of filming and we will be launching a nationwide campaign against any more. We do not need or want either today or tomorrow for ourselves or for future generations any more of this influx of so-called refugees and those who have come here must be sent home. Now we know the time for this is crucial and it's the right time because the country's mind is on this. The country knows their borders are about to be opened again to a population which already has an appalling record for violent crime all over Europe. We know what is coming. And the bleeding hearts are always, always for one group of people only. And that's the so-called refugees. There's never any concern, never, for Europeans who could be slaughtered in the street or raped. No concern at all. So don't believe either that this has anything to do with compassion. It's nothing at all to do with compassion, everything to do with hatred of this country and its people. So we want our freedoms. We want our society back. We want the Britain we knew. We want it back. This, this madness is not the Britain we knew. We want it back. And, and every attack on it, we will fight on every front. And this influx of illegal immigrants is an attack. It is an attack. And it's an attack by a government that is allowing it. It is knowingly knowingly putting us in danger it is knowingly reducing the light the uh, making life harder for british pensioners who've paid into the pot and then let me talk about the nhs i'm going to cover the nhs very soon the nhs is effectively gone mm -hmm.